Hey guys, there are about a billion of us that play video games to pass their time. So that got me wondering, what do astronauts do when they are bored? Do they play video games with their friends back at home? This is Danish and you are watching This All Tech. So let's get started. Space is harsh and everything up there wants to kill you. But human ingenuity has made even this harsh environment a home for a few. And if you are an astronaut, it's very probable that you are living in the International Space Station. The International Space Station has about 100 or so laptops that take care of everything from life support to control systems. And though most of these laptops are Linux based, a few of them that are given to astronauts for Twitter, email and entertainment are actually Windows. And until quite recently, the laptops that these astronauts used were Lenovo ThinkPads T61Ps. Now these laptops were fairly atrocious and they came with a dual core processor, 4GB of RAM and a mediocre graphic card at best. These laptops have been up there since 2008 and thankfully NASA has begun migrating them to HP's ZBook 15 line. These laptops are complete beasts. They come with a 15.6 inch 1080p display, a quad-core Xeon processor, 32GB of RAM and a 2 or 4GB NVIDIA Quadro GPU. Now these laptops can probably handle everything that you throw at them but just for kicks, even the internal graphic on these cards can run Dota 2 at medium to high settings. And at this point you must be wondering, why not just send razor blades up there? Well, it's not that easy. A lot of these laptops have to be re-engineered for space and it might not be for the reasons that you might think. They have to survive the arduous journey to the International Space Station and also have a new cooling system. Passive components on laptops get cooled by something called convection on Earth. The components heat up the air above them and the air rises up and cold air falls down. This is a method of cooling that is employed in most laptops and this won't work in space. And because there is no up or down in space, hot air just surrounds the components and just keeps heating up. We need special type of blowers to blow away this air to further cool down the laptops. Now that the hardware is in place, what about the internet connection? The International Space Station has an uplink of about 25 megabits per second and a downlink of about 300 megabits per second. And though this might seem pretty huge, a large chunk of this is actually reserved for scientific experiments and control. So what is available to the scientists and the astronauts up there is actually more comparable to what you find in most households. But internet speed is not everything. What matters more in gaming is latency. The International Space Station comes equipped with two antennas, one catering to the S-band, the other one catering to the Q-band. The Q band is what we'll be looking into because that's what NASA uses to send high throughput data. Now, how this communication network works is that there is a geostationary satellite. Geostationary satellite, for those who don't know, is a satellite that, whose position is fixed in space with respect to the Earth. The International Space Station sends data to this geostationary satellite and the geostationary satellite in turn transmits it to Earth. Because multiple satellites are used, the latency in this type of communication is very high. Expect about 150 milliseconds per satellite use. So you can kiss your dreams of playing first person shooters on the International Space Station, goodbye. But there might be a way. NASA is testing out this new technology where it is using lasers to send data instead. Now using the speed of light as 299792458 meters per second and the height of the International Space Station as 400 kilometers, we can see that it takes approximately 1 millisecond for the signal to reach the ground. Now assuming that there is still a delay of about 60 milliseconds or so as processing time, that still puts it well within the usable range. This is a lot better than what we would get through satellites, but there's still a lot of time before this gets fully implemented. But let's stretch this theory even a bit further. What's the maximum possible distance, assuming 50 to 60 milliseconds as a processing delay, that you can still play most games at? Now, for this calculation, I've used about 300 milliseconds as the absolute maximum that people will allow. So that puts it to about 100,000 kilometers. To just give you a perspective, the moon is about 300,000 kilometers away. So even if we had a colony on the moon, we wouldn't be able to play online with them. And as we move away from the moon, we'll be using something called the Deep Space Network. Now this has atrocious data rates and can barely send images back to Earth. This also means that if we set up a Martian colony anytime in the future, we won't be able to play online games with them. I think that's pretty sad. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe. And you can follow me on social media over here. And if you know anyone who would like this, please share with them also. Until next time, this is Dissolve signing off. Bye-bye.